Oh, fuck. You are receiving a collect call from... Brenda! An inmate at Charles Manson Spirit Penitentiary here in the Second Circle of Hell, home of the Fornicators, Para Espanol, Mark El Deuce. To accept these charges, please say yes. Thank you for accepting. Your donation will benefit the paving of a commercial road between Hell's Second and Third Circles to promote faster transportation. Connecting you to... Brenda? Hello? You have a lot of nerve calling here, Brenda. Why, why do you think you could call a rack of my charges? Well, Javier, I, I know you have access to Audie's money, and I, I, I know you have the... What? 45 cents a minute it takes to talk to me? You have a lot of nerve sending me to fucking spirit prison so I can sit here and rot while you try to take my fucking husband's earnings away from him. You are manipulating him far more than I am, Javier. And so help me God, if I ever escape this fucking prison, I am going to tear you apart, you stupid fucking gun! Uh, well, Brenda, like, the thing you don't really know is, is that you can't get out of Spirit World Prison, and, uh, I'm already taking her husband for everything he's worth, so, uh, fuck you, bitch. I just, let me speak, let, let me speak to Artie. Artie's not home right now, Brenda. It's just me and you. Javier, I'm gonna put it to you like this. In your world, what happens in prison? I heard you get like butt raped. In the spirit world, you get so raped. I have been so raped every day since I've been here. And you know what? Feels a lot better than you. Nothing you can say to me will work, I mean. I, I guess I'll see you in the spirit world like when I go, but I will never, ever run into you. Cause you went there for life, Brenda. Nobody's well, did ever- you buy for three million dollars? What are you, what are you, what are you doing with? home, Marty? Who, who are you on the phone with? Nobody. I thought you were only going to spend $50,000 last night. I I don't think I spent I don't I don't think I spent that much like I think you must be mistaken. I've got the I've got the what bill right here. I've got the credit card bill right here. All I had was a McChicken and a McDouble from McDonald's. Odd. Why are you still eating McDoubles? You had my card. I just I only had a couple dollars. I gave you the credit card, and you never came back. And now I get the bill I'm for three now, million I'm dollars. Am I not here now? You're here now, but what did you buy for $3 million, Javier? I did spend $3 million already. So then we need to call, what, the police? Because the credit card was stolen? Where did they go? What do you mean, where did where it go? Where were the charges for? I don't know. I just got the bill. I'm asking you. You went out with the I, card. I what I did you buy? I, took, I, I went out. I got myself a new suit. And I got myself a Rolex. Right. And I took a few of the homies out. We we had a good time. I know. I mean, we went to the bar, but it was certainly below fifty thousand dollars. Okay, then we need to call. I know. We I need to call Lisa. Bar tab and you know, I just I like to be. That's that guy. not three million dollars, though, Javier. What did you do with the rest of the money? My accountant is calling me, complaining because a lot of my bills just bounced. Well, if you must know, it was a surprise. A surprise. I was gonna tell you, Artie. I got us an island. You bought an island for us? Where? I mean, is I mean, you can come. Where is it? Oh, somewhere in the Caribbean. How did you buy an island for? And, and why would you do that with with my money without telling me? You told me, you told me I could use it. I mean, like you said. But I it's mi that was millions. Millions of dollars, and when you left, I told you not to spend more than fifty thousand. I don't know why you're getting all upset about it, already. I mean, you have billions. I know, but most of the billions are in net worth. You know, not like I could just go to the bank and get out a billion dollars. I mean, it cleared. It cleared for. I mean, 
declared for $3.5 million. I mean... Well, that was from the checking account. All of the other stuff has been put in savings and investment bonds. And, you know, I'm not trying to be stupid with my money anymore. But then you came and spent $3 million. I only wanted you I to just spend 10000 I just thought we had that kind of relationship. I mean, I did take care of you. I mean, you are the reason, like... I mean, you even have yeah, a brain well, to manage by You already spent, you already invested. I mean, granted, you this is okay. just like your mother. No, listen, this is okay. I, I'm very happy with what you've done for me. I'm not saying that, but all I'm saying is you spent so much money uh, just to even get my brain back, which was great, but now I'm already $2 so billion dollars in the hole. You're sitting there saying that you don't want your brain back on. No, I do, but Why you... don't you just go outside and jump off your head and just sit there with the fucking severed brain then? No, that's not what I'm saying, if Javier, money is but such you a spent... deal in our relationship? You spent $2 billion with Mark Cuban to get the technology back. That was just a lot of the net worth. That's all I'm saying. We have to be more you responsible. You these every day. If this I, is I going to know. last, if I don't know how... If money is going to be such a big deal, then why don't you just... Take it all or just put it in somewhere and donate it somewhere, like to me or something. I'm not going to, no. I'm going to keep the money, Javier, it's, and I want you. The money you, has really changed you. The money's you changed were, me, Javier. Back when you were just a wet pile of brain soup, you weren't, you weren't like this. But I don't, I just don't understand. You, <sighs> you sure trusted me when, don't, just trust me about this island. You trusted me when I was taking care of you. You're right. Well, when do we get the title? When can we go see the island? I mean, I, I already have a planned trip with... I already have trips, you know, planned with my friends. Well, I mean, can I... I mean, you can... can we I go? I can go I go, go with that, you? I gotta go do that first. And then... Can't I meet your friends finally? I mean, we've been together a couple weeks now, months. Oh, I just don't think it's like that kind of... I don't think they're like that kind of friends. You know, I wouldn't want you to don't. introduce my... Well, okay. Um, can I have the credit card back? No. Do you, are you going to use it again tonight, or? Yeah. Well, we we have to we have to genuinely, seriously. I'm serious, Javier. Stick to a budget. Serious. You can spend ten thousand dollars tonight. I don't think we're gonna. I don't think. I don't think that's how it's gonna work now. Uh, it's my money, Javier. It's not yours. I think it's my money. What do you mean? I, I just don't know what you're going to do about it when I take it all. You're not going to take it all. You don't even have any, you, you don't have any access to it, Javier. And besides, what what's mine you, is yours. What if I told you it was already gone? What do you mean? Have you seen next month's bill statement? Do you have online? Do you do it online or you just get what they send you in the mail? I don't. I've never. I'm leaving you already. And I'm taking everything. What would give you the right to do Good that? Good luck finding me in my island, bitch. You're bluffing, Javier. You're not going to take... You didn't take billions of dollars. You're not going to run away to some island. You're a gardener. You don't have the kind of skills it would take to survive and start building an island community on your own. Even with billions of dollars. Okay, Artie. I did not take everything, but I just... I just don't think we're going to have any more of these money conversations, okay? Because the same technology that makes you be able to talk to me right now, me and Mark Cuban have the switch. What do you mean? It means if at any point we want to turn your brains back into soup, you, you're going to go back to soup. Why would you do that? It was my money that... So you're going to threaten me with my own fucking brain, Javier? And hey, take my who, money? You're the one who gave control to what do you call me? Just a fucking gardener? Who's just a motherfucking gardener now, bitch? I think I think it's only fair that you give me back my credit card and pack up all your stuff and leave. <laughs> what did you do? Don't do that to me, Javier. You're, get out of my house. You are a criminal. You are a crook. You should get out. And I won't press any charges if you just leave okay, right now. Okay, that's all I want. That's all I want. Now give me your checkbook too. Well, I'm not giving you the money, Javier. You just need to take what you've already got and go. Okay, Artie, listen. I'm just going to tell you how it's going to go. Uno, I get to live here. Dos, 
I get to bring anybody I want here. And I get the master bedroom. That's part of those. Tres. You are now my sex slave. And you are going to service me and all of my cholo homies. Like a bottom? Just an empty open We're gonna bottom? We're going to turn your brain off and then use you. You're going to turn my... You're going to turn my brain off and then fulfill one of my dreams. Okay. Thanks a lot, Javier. What do you have to say? You still love me? No, I... I could never love somebody. I let you sit on that one, Artie. For now, I'm going to the club. I think I think I'm gonna turn your brain back on so you maybe can clean up around here. So fuck you, Javier. Artie. What? Artie. Brenda. Are you there? Brenda, are you calling Artie, me from the I spirit don't know world? What's Javier didn't get me. Oh, oh my god, here it is. I thought Javier, wait, you were Audie? you were on the phone with Javier. Audi! Yeah, hello? Can you hear me? Yes, can you hear me? Are you okay? Javier is blackmailing me. I know, that's what I knew that's what he was gonna do. He was trying to do it to me. Why do you think I didn't give a shit about him? But why did you not care about me to the point that it would make me want to be with Javier? I don't understand. I don't know why you're sitting here trying to say I didn't take care of you. I, I think you were just mad at me because I was using Javier while you were there. You always have shit in your diaper. Well, but you did I don't know, man. I just thought you didn't love me or even want to be my mom anymore. So why do you of care? Of course I love you. Why do you care that Javier is going to of turn me I on love and off? You, Audie, you know how I am. You know I need to have dick 100% of the time. Well, then how do I get you here? How can I help? I don't know. You have to figure this out. They're pretty strict in here. Well, maybe we can get Sean Gee to give you a favor or something. I don't know. Uh... I can pretend that somebody died, and we can use that for the furlough. They, I saw them do that on Orange is the New Black. Oh, I saw that episode too. Did we watch that together? Yeah, I think we did. And, and remember, Piper got to go to her grand grand's funeral. Oh yeah, and, and it was a, it was a big furlough. deal for a while because she wanted to get a fur she wanted to do something like that. Yeah, Everybody and, in the prison was look wanted a furlough, and that one woman went on a furlough, and I think she ended up getting into some trouble while I, she that's was doing I think it. so too. Yeah, that's what I was gonna say as well. I but think she. Did I don't want to be trouble. going getting in trouble, but I do want to escape and go somewhere where they'll never find me. Well, of course. I mean, but... Well, I don't know where that would be because it's the all-knowing, omnipotent, omnipresent Sean Gee and Latricia. He sa he talks a lot of trash about being omnipotent, all-present. I mean, I don't think he's quite that powerful. I mean, he's a spirit attorney. Judge. Well, but at this point, he's sort of the, the god to Latricia's Satan. He's... You think Shang-Gi's God? I have watched Shang-Gi do things no woman should ever have to watch a man do. Well? Have you, have you ever seen a man lay with a demon? No, I guess not. Shang-Gi's been with three at one time. Well, all I'm saying is he's the, the opposite to Lucifer now because we know God's not there and Lucifer died and all I know is... Brenda... I have some bad news to tell you. What? Wink, wink. What? Your mom died. Wink, wink. Your mother died. Wink, My wink. mother died? Yeah. Yeah. The new, she got COVID. The news came in My today. My mom got COVID-19? Yep. She That's died. nothing to get? No, unfortunately not. I thought it was all a government conspiracy made up by Trump. Well, it's not. And, uh, wink, wink. Grandma, <laughs> grandma died. I need I know you do. You follow me now, Shangi. If you can hear me, follow me. My grandma died. Help me. Hello and welcome to Motif. Uh, today, uh, 
listen, this is episode six of what you might call the third season, but this is also episode 69, <laughs> LOL. Now, today, we've been banking up these episodes, folks. Not something we would normally do. Motafe originally was a, you know... Pretty much every day go straight to right you would come over that day we would record it and i would upload it yeah and you could tell by the you could tell by the quality <laughs> i mean was but it was a good con it was a really good show i mean I, I as we're on the show talking about how good the show is <laughs> right um for the last few weeks we've been stocking up shows spam risk is calling me i'm moving uh to georgia and until, for now, we've been recording all these episodes in person together, um, ignoring all social distancing, because I guess, not that it really matters. Yeah, well, I but, felt like you were always in my like, crew of people. Yeah, of course, like, of I course. Could, if, we got, if you got right. it, I got it. Right, yeah, exactly. Um, but we, uh, now now that I'm moving, uh, we, we, it, it, by the time you're hearing this, uh, I've been living in Georgia for six weeks. So, you didn't even notice, I'm sure. And here we are. This is the last episode that I, we're recording together in Ohio, at least, right now. And at least until October. There might be a, a, a special uh, episode that we can record together in October, probably around the holidays after that. But for the foreseeable future, we're doing via distance. I assume yeah. we'll have all the kinks worked out within the first six weeks, so I'm sure you won't notice any kinks. Well, I mean, probably we'll record a couple episodes, and then right, and in then, six and weeks, then in six that. weeks you'll see the difference. You're right. You're right. Or um, however long it's going to take. You're right. Six weeks we'll see the difference to the viewers if they're hearing this now. The next episode will be. It might. It kinks. might have some errors. Yeah, it might have some kinks, but we're, we'll work on it. We. We'll, yeah, it'll but I get feel better. like we're really working at making it like. A much better produced show. Oh, for sure. The audio engineering is a hell of a lot better. There was no audio engineering no, yeah, before, absolutely except in like some rare occasions. Like I remember, we used like the MSNBC music. Yeah. Bam, like, bam, 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 bam. It always turned out well, but even right. then you'd hear like clicks right before it. Like right, <laughs> <laughs> right. Now I'm trying to get rid of all that stuff. Just you know, it just like the little. Uh, touches on it make it like so much better right yeah. so much more enjoyable for like me to listen to it back yeah so right I know exactly it's better for right to listen to because i don't know how nicholas listened for so long with all like sometimes i listen to episodes and i like hear like <laughs> right like big loud noises that like i don't know people shouldn't be put through hearing right but well, I think we're going to I think it, it's going to be an all right transition honestly i don't yeah. I, i'm not expecting too many on, yeah, we're planning know. on having like a set day for it every week, and right? Probably spend a lot of time, like, you know, even like splitting the editing or whatever. Like, right. I think it'll be fine. Yeah, I completely agree. But certainly, don't tell us if you hate it because the show's going to continue. <laughs> <laughs> um, there's one thing that I thought I should update the viewers on. Of course, I've already updated, uh, you know, privately everybody that needs to know, but. Why not continue the trend of exploiting family drama, right? Um, and because it's sort of, I left the last episode that we talked about my father and Judy and all of that. We kind of left it on a cliffhanger because I wasn't sure what to believe. Well, folks, Dennis has resurfaced and he texted me out of nowhere. And he said, it was just a random message. I was actually sitting down editing an episode of Motif, I think, or maybe Audio Tales, who the fuck knows. And I got the text from an unknown number, and it just said, hey. And I just said, who's this? I just, you know, what, who is this? Uh, and he said, dad. And I'm like, uh, you know, of course, instant anxiety, too. But I'm Did you like. you have anxiety when you first got the message from a random number? No. Because I was just like, oh, they probably just texted the wrong number. You know what I yeah, mean? I, mean, I don't know, like but. That. Or it was like one of those spam things, like, and they were going to text back, like, meet sexy singles in your area, oh, you know, okay, something yeah, like that. Yeah, but yeah. it wasn't that. And he, I said, what could you possibly want? And this motherfucker responds creepily, honestly, and kind of scary. He says, you. 
And I'm like, ew. <laughs> but also, that's never going to happen. And I said that. I'm like, that's never going to happen. I didn't know that. I didn't know that you thought it was ancestral. At well, not really. It's just a creepy thing to say. What do you want, you? Like, ew. I thought it seemed kind of pitiful. Like, it is pitiful. You. It is pitiful. Like you. It is pitiful. But you you made that decision when you walk you know when he waltzed on out the door. Right. What can you do? Anyway, I said that's never gonna happen. And he said, I wanna come back and make things right. And I'm like, there's no making things right. I've moved on and you should too. And he says, Oh, are you sure? And I said, Yeah, and at that point I'm like, I guess I'll be a little bit more direct. I'm like, you didn't give a damn about me when you walked out that day and lied to my face for weeks before that about what was really going on and so like you don't just get to come in and out you know based on like what you feel that day yeah exactly and he's like okay i love you and then i blocked him so at least for now that seems like a little bit of a resolution Uh, i talked to judy right after that and judy confirmed that he also called her and said that he had texted me and he wants to come back there to Judy's, of course. Now, she very well might let him. But at the very least, it it at least closes that chapter on the weird Judy voicemails, aunt's betrayal kind of thing. Because at the very least, the last time we talked, she seems to be telling the truth. Yeah, I guess it could be awkward if you take her to vote. Yeah, I at that point, I just won't. I would just wow. be like, Judy, I'm here. And like if he came out, I would just, you know, kind of act like you 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 know how you do like a ghost you don't see him you know you just don't see him you look through him don't ignore him or you don't acknowledge him that's what i mean to say yeah um but yeah so i guess that's a bit of the update for that um so i guess we can close that chapter of a little bit of family drama but of course let me i i i think this is going to end up being a recurring theme on the show throughout it's it's lifespan, and I guess if you consider the show, because I, I think he's gonna rear his ugly head again. That's what I'm saying. I don't think that's the last time I ever heard from my father, and I think Certainly at some not. point I can tell you from the perspective of someone who has a really crazy mother, it's never gonna be the last time, right? Until I, they're deceased. Yeah, yeah. But even then, you still might get calls about them, <laughs> right? All yeah, the time. yeah exactly. Like, hey, do you know what happened to this? Do you know where he went? Like, exactly. Did he ever find? Did you ever find this of mine? Right. Where did? Uh, yeah. There's so many things that he's just up and abandoned. So I'm sure there's a lot of people who would yeah. want to hear from him. He's, but thankfully, you're going to be gone. I mean, you right. could even go so far as getting a new phone number. Being right. Like State getting a new phone and number. And that would be that would certainly add even more distance. And maybe it would be the last time I ever heard from him. Except he'd probably make a fake Facebook account and try to, you know get in touch with me that way or just move back into judy's and learn everything about my life through her you know that sort of thing so it's yeah. still you kind of got to not really got to yeah. still kind of keep her at arm's length but whatever yeah maybe just continue telling her you live in springfield and always give her right. excuses why you can't actually see her though right she thinks i live at my mom's right now so i mean that's that's just the way it's got to be safe i guess anyway we're gonna have a, a brief intermission And then a special guest will be joining us to talk about history. Welcome back to part two of Motif. We are joined here today with a special guest, my girlfriend, Abigail Spracklin. Say hello. Hello. Hello, hello. everyone. Uh, welcome to the welcome to the show. The first yeah, special welcome. guest of season three. Oh yeah, big honor, big <laughs> honor. Really? Thank you. You've never been on the show before. You're a newbie. I've never been on a podcast I've before. Never been on any sort of podcast <laughs> right. whatsoever. I'm totally new to the industry. You, well, I'm sure it'll be. Everybody's I hope it's, doing a, it these I hope days. it's a comfort. Everybody's I hope it's a welcoming, uh, welcoming podcast. To, I guess. <laughs> We um, hope you, we hope you come back on. Right, thank yeah, you, of thank course, you. right. You, but via distance, via distance. <laughs> via distance yeah. Right. Um, so I I like to listen to background mu- noise. I don't really like music that much these days. And so when I'm driving, I'm listening to podcasts. 
And one of the podcasts that I like to put on in the background as background noise is Ear Biscuits by Rhett and Link. I give them way too much of my <laughs> ad revenue, to be honest. I listen to way too much of their content for what it's worth. But one of the episodes of Ear Biscuits they recently had was a discussion about um, what the... Uh, God, I'm, I'm like Candy Southers. I'm like, I literally am. I literally am you, Candy yeah, Southers. Candy but, um, the, uh, the question of the day that we're discussing, I'm just going to dive into that, is if you could witness one, but actually two, historical events, what would they be? Now, when they had the discussion, they just focused on one historical event that you could argue is not really a historical event can we say what they said well i just don't i don't want to spoil because what if what if you said one of their events you know what i mean Ooh, well well I, i'm gonna find out afterwards yeah i'll certainly well i'm change. certainly gonna tell you when we get into it when we get into it let's just go we'll start the second conversation we're gonna have is about entertainment history sort of like you'll see but let's just start with the real history first okay, and okay. i'll let you guys start and and we'll go from well, there well hold on you made me nervous sitting here saying that like well i'm not going to tell you in case you chose it but like. well i don't want because i think we can have if they choose if oh, if you chose discussion. that topic that they choose i think a we could have discussion. a better topic but i don't want to taint it and then be like oh yeah they talked about this in case that's what you chose because if you chose it you might have had a better rationale than what they had okay i get what you're saying I just really want to know what they chose. Oh, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna. I'm not gonna. You know, I'm not gonna leave well, it as. I, go ahead. I can start it off saying what historical event I chose. Yes. But you know, the more I think about it, the more I'm not even sure if it's a historical event. So did it happened in history. It happened in history. Yeah, it did. Historical event. Um. I just. I would love to go and see the like finishing of the Great Pyramid of Giza. That's nice. Well, that's a good that's one. exactly what that's I want to do because I want to like because it's just I think all the time I'm like why the fuck? How the fuck did these people do this? How, right. Like how like how what the f I, I just want to know like you just literally I see them, how like, did they do up, it? Lifting up these like big stone fucking blocks. <laughs> right. Because like I just to me it just doesn't seem humanly possible like things like Stonehenge Mm -hmm. I want to just see like them being how was it done? Because Even if it, I have to stick around, like go back in time and stick around for like fucking two thousand years and just spectate, right? You're gonna I'm, live for two thousand years. Well, I'm just gonna be a spectator, like in a video game, you right. know, just like watching, oh, right? Like, like in die, a little like, bubble. Your ghost goes back. Yeah, they talked about that too. Interestingly, that like being in a bubble because they were like, "Can I?" Because like obviously, if you could change the course of history, like I would, I'd stop nine eleven or like I'd kill Hitler. You know, these sorts of things. I'd but, invest in you the know, stock market right after. <laughs> right. <laughs> I. Like Exactly, but so it's more like yeah, exactly. Like you just witness it, and you might be there for you know God knows how long. But honestly, yeah, I like see it all play out. Do, how, what what are the leading theories about how they built the pyramids in the first place? Um, Ramps. I think, yeah, I think it's like <laughs> mainstream archaeologists try to say that these people like had this advanced rope system, and they had like five thousand people like in a line just like hauling these big things of granite. Like, we can see the quarries, like, where they got it, but we still don't... They think that they chiseled every single piece of it, but what they really don't know is how they had, like, such advanced mathematics laid out through all, like throughout it. Because, like, the pyramid is a... It's a scale replica of the Earth. All of the mathematical properties of it. It's, like, it's a, it's like something like 156 ratio of the Earth. Okay. But, like, if you complete the circle around the pyramid, it's, like, the exact... Oh. dimensions of the earth and shit and it's like it's like there's so many things like that with it that they're like okay well some sort of master master like intellect person had to, had to have like, done like there's no mind on our planet who could have done it right like, but today. but they did but, blah, blah, but they were they're able to interpret it so but you just never seen anything like it since well right like, yeah i guess you're right and the interesting thing about the pyramids is that like the older ones are the more advanced Right. So we've lost, like, the knowledge behind it. So I just want to see, like, who are these, like, master... I think it could be, like, a fucking other species, like, civilization that lived with us at the same time. That would be interesting. Some who sort knows? of alien species. I mean, species. maybe they're from this planet. I don't know. Easily. They interbred with us, and that's why we, we are how we are now. Like, we're, like, part monkey, part kind of, like... <laughs> right. 
inner inner species uh, DNA manipulated. But I mean, who well, could ever prove it? And Maybe it was just like a sorry. No, go ahead. Maybe it was just like a separate set of like people. Like we have our civilization, Homo sapiens. Maybe there's like a separate set. Of yeah, that's what I'm saying, like homo and they got like Palafias. they died right. out or something. But, the, the missing but then how link. would we not know like any of their knowledge? Because like, I watch lots of conspiracy documentaries and I've watched plenty of like on giants. Yeah. Like and then finding like giant skeletons and shit. And I'm like, who are these people? Like we see these uh we dug up humans with like huge craniums and shit. Hmm. So we're like, oh like But if they, they must have they must have had to have lived before us because if they lived simultaneously, like don't you think we would have gotten some of their knowledge, like how they did it, like we some did. account? We did. What was it? Just architecture in general. It's like we're lear- like we learn like we don't know how- like you remember when uh, Notre Dame burned down? Mm-hmm. We're like, we don't know anybody who knows how to build this. But we can right. look at it and get an idea, go like, okay, I'm gonna try to do something like that. And the Egyptians tried to do that, like there were like plenty of uh because every um, pharaoh... No, no, I'm not saying that they looked... Like, are you saying they looked at the pyramids and then, like, learned from it that way? And they then tried, tried to, to And then tried to replicate it. it? No, I'm saying, like, if there was two civilizations living next to each other and, like, one just got wiped out or something or they interbred with us, like, how wouldn't we have just known anything about how they built it? You know what I'm saying? If we lived at the same time. Well, in reality, I think... Yeah, I don't think we lived at the same time. In reality, I think okay, what happened what is that... Um, there was some sort of cataclysmic event that wiped out all of humanity except for a few people and a few people who knew these sorts of things and they passed it down from generation to generation because there is like overwhelming evidence like graham hancock overwhelming evidence that there's there was some sort of humongous flood from a meteor uh, impact right yeah i was gonna ask about that in uh somewhere in greenland we like actually found the crater from it and it would have like flooded the entire world and it's like well think about if like something like that didn't happen like we're the same species we have the same mind we easily could have been way further than we are now then right and then it just all got erased basically like the earth just got started over again and then people had to like go back to they went the i think their idea is that people went back to living with hunter gatherers oh and uh these like masterminds or like wh- whoever these like intellectual people were knew all this shit about architecture like taught them that that and that's like we found this thing called Gobekli Tepe, mm-hmm. and it's this uh, these like ancient ruins. There's like fifty fucking like huge stone monoliths found underground, and it's like one of the oldest things we've ever found, and it's like ten thousand years old. But according to mainstream archaeology, civilization started three thousand years ago. So it's like oh, they're like, it, like oh, how predates is, they're like, civilization. They're like, right. How is this possible that hunter gatherers built this? Right. There's no way. There's absolutely no way. It's just the, to me, it's the biggest mystery of all time. Yeah. Like how these fucking, like how do you fuck you just dig up something like that that's 10,000 years old and like not go, what? Yeah, right. <laughs> right. Because these are supposed to be cavemen. Like cavemen building this. Like there's no way. It does, yeah, it doesn't make any sense. It's a mystery. Like the Great Pyramid of Giza is a mystery. Like that's, I think that's a good, that's a good I have mystery. to, like that's I feel like one. sad in my life that I'll never know. I just hope right. when I die I get all the answers to it. I hope so too, brother. <laughs> But certainly, yeah, really, I think I do think that's a I think that's a good one because it would answer. It was just a it's a fascinating I mystery mean, that already exists. It's the biggest mystery that of all time, right? Um, there we go. I don't. Jeez, how do I follow that? You know, like so many facts. He's just like fact, fact, fact. Oh, machine. I mean, I'm just like interested. In he really just, know the history. Okay, no, but okay, I chose not like one solid event, but like a time period to like observe. Yeah, which is the Enlightenment. Okay. The Enlightenment period. Yes. Interesting. The Enlightenment period, yes. I love the Enlightenment period. I also love the Romantic period. Because those are periods of, like, it's not just, like, grind, grind, work, like, like work, work, work. You know what I mean? It's right. like People think. are allowed to, like, it's like, like, spread ideas and spread new ideas and, like, about anything, about society, about, like, art, about science. Like, people right. are just literally, yeah, like, the main right. thing people did in society was just, like, now granted... Obviously, I like I was thinking about the Enlightenment, and I was like, being a woman, I was like, women Enlightenment speakers, they weren't, you know, women Did they weren't not equal. Exist? I mean, it's oh, not they like still, they didn't they exist, still but like, equal during the it was like the, seven, I mean, how it was like the 1700s. Yeah. yeah, so it's like right. they had like that was only the 1700s. We're talking like John Locke. Yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. But so him just sitting there, you just want to like observe him in a bubble, sitting there at his desk, going like, I think that all men are created no, equal. No. 
No. You wouldn't be like, you're up watching the rent, like, watching. Well, I guess that's not the Renaissance. No, I, don't I just know what wanna... I'm thinking of. It was well, the Enlightenment. Okay. You. <laughs> Okay. Well, I guess maybe you should explain what you mean by the Enlightenment. It is the Enlightenment period. That, okay. It's like, that's what I was explaining. It's like a time of, like, introspective. It's like a time of, like, the sharing of new ideas. Like, there were people everywhere just, like, getting together, like, collaborating, talking to each other, and just, like, coming up with new ideas. Like, it's when, like, a lot of, like, social justice things were bo- born. It's when a lot of ideas, like... Because before the Enlightenment, like, the Enlightenment led the way to, like like, every major, like, revolution. Like, right after the Enlightenment was, like, the French Revolution, where everyone was like, oh, my God, like, all these new ideas are circulating. Like, maybe the people, like, that are in charge of us, like, maybe they're wrong. And then it led to the French Revolution. It led to the American Revolution. So, the Enlightenment, like, like we just need to have a second Enlightenment, too. Yeah, it's, it's like, like the exact like, opposite of what's happening now. Yeah, right. like we need to have, like, the Enlightenment Part 2, yo. Like, the new... <laughs> enlightenment Part the new 2. Yeah, that's what that's, we really do. Right. But yeah, I just, I don't want to see, like, any particular, like, moment, moment of the Enlightenment. It's just, like, living in an age where, like, things were changing. So you would like to live in it, too. And, like, I just like to live in an age, like, living in the age of, like, creativity and thought instead of the age of, like, logic and power. Like. I totally agree I'm just, with that. I just, yeah. And so maybe the next age of humanity after this capitalist age will be another Enlightenment where we can all, where we can be even more progressive and more forward with people because it's like even back in that enlightenment like women weren't equal like nobody was equal it was all about white men still but right but like now maybe in a new enlightenment like we can really truly embrace like humanity like as humanity instead of just like separate groups and that's one thing like the enlightenment like tried they tried they were like people deserve rights everyone deserves liberty like like that was like it was huge like no it's one, so no weird, one thought that like, like everyone was just like oh i can own you and I can own you, and, like, people own each other, and people, like, there's so much classism, like, nobility or, like, royalism, and all of that was kind of, like, starting to give way at that point, and it's just, like, it's just, like I'm ready to go, I'm ready to go through that again. Right. Blacks were excluded from it, though, because it's, like, they didn't even think they were human. Ever, yeah, exactly. Like, <laughs> but, I mean, so it's the enlightenment where they, like, were finally race? enlightened that, like, people deserved rights, but that we still haven't been enlightened to the point that's, like... Everybody. Everyone is a person, right? So, like, I'm yeah, ready for that. There, like, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's, like, it's pretty I'm backward. It's pretty bad, honestly. Yeah, but I mean, think about how it was. Like, think about how it was. Like, we're good. We're getting better. Yeah, we're we're not good, good but we're getting better every day. But like, oh my god, even the Enlightenment period was still like, Jesus. You know what I mean? Right. Of yeah. course. Yeah, well, I don't think it's ever going to be perfect, but I think well, no, it no, could no. certainly be a lot better than what it is now. I agree. I, I certainly, it absolutely could be better than what it is but, now. Yeah, I was, like, sitting outside before this, like, reading about history, and, like, even just reading about history kind of gives you a new perspective, because it's, like, people have always been fighting for what they believe in. Right. And so, it's, like, that's never going to stop. Yeah, and people are, like, the same. And people are always like, growing and always learning. Because the, the, the more history we have, the more history we have, the more we can learn right. for the future. And so, people are always growing and learning. So, maybe one day we'll reach, like... A utopian society. I don't think it's anytime soon. Maybe we'll all get wiped out beforehand. But I just wish. It was what do you think? True. You guys think it's? You guys think we could ever get there? Well, no. utopia? No. I, I think at least not in our lifetime. I think not in our walls, lifetime. I think I'm thinking of, uh, thousands everything. of years down the road. Because like nothing's equal in the universe. Nothing's equal. Hmm. I don't mean like utopias and everything is perfect and that like everything is good is and happy I mean? all the time. <laughs> No, I just mean like, well, I guess my definition of utopia is different than the <laughs> traditional one, whatever. I'm making, I'm making up new shit, but like, see, I'm making up new shit, new ideas, like the Enlightenment. <laughs> right. right, yeah, I guess you're right. No, but like, let's I'm change saying, utopia, let's change the definition. <laughs> yes, yeah, like, those whatever, bastard like, power grabbers <laughs> and Websters can't make the definition anymore, it's ours. No, I'm talking about a world where like people are just, they just. The only thing I see in a utopia is just so simple. It's just people just recognizing that everyone else is a person and treating them like it. Like, treat everyone like they're your brother, your personal family. Like, people will still do bad. People will still do wrong. Like, but you forgive and you move on and you grow as a humankind, not as, like, individuals. Like, but we're still... It's so hard to explain because I still want to have individuality. I don't want conformity and... 
like in a world where everyone like Just understands let each other. Do their own thing. Yeah, in a world where everyone like understands each other and like can really like empathize with each other, you can do whatever you want. That's when the most indiv- individuality is actually like will be allowed to blossom because there'll be no judgment. Right. And like horrible things will still happen because good and light and dark and evil and good and all that, you know, all this cosmic stuff that has to go on. But like, I think it'll just be easier to manage if we could ever get there. I completely agree with you. This I, is why I think, sorry, sorry. No, that's all right. Uh, this is just why I think everybody in the U.S. we should legalize uh, drugs. Well, drugs, yeah. yeah. But <laughs> I was going to say legalize polygamy. Oh. And then we all get married. And then oh, we're all. Right. Oh my family. God! No, because we're all actually family. family. Yeah, right. It's just like, hey, that's my stepbrother. Right. Get get off him. You don't get. actually have to be family. You can just think about each other as fellow human beings. Right. Like I guess like, but it's like one. I guess it's just one. Yeah, I guess it's just one way to get people to care about other people right. is to like make them family. <laughs> like literally. Family. Family. <laughs> I think the number one way to get people to care about other people is to let people experience the world. Like, you know how many people don't even leave their hometowns, like, all around the world? Right. Well, like, it's not that they're not allowed. They just Yeah, don't. but you can't. Like, you, you can't. You make them? No, you can't. You can't. Like, I don't have enough money to, like, pay to go to, like, China right now and, like, see how the Chinese live and learn from them and, like, realize that they're people, too. Like, not that I don't, but you know what I mean. Like, I don't have enough money to do that. Like, the right. system holds you down. Like, people should be free to, like, follow their passions and, like, follow their dreams and, like, live the life they love. Because if you love life, you're more willing to, like, put love out there and do good things for other people. And if you're growing and learning and experiencing the world, like, yeah. how can you hate the world? How can you hate other people in the world? Like, we're all just living right. on the world. We just have different cultures. Like, we're just, we're all just products of our cultures and our societies. And, like, but we all have hopes and dreams and everything, like. Right. I mean, we're different, but we're the same in a lot of ways. You know? Right. I feel that. I know. I feel that. I know. Like, damn. Come on, people. I think that's a really feel solid it. answer. Thank you. Now, about my modern historical... Me- the oh, 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 What's not, modern? We're not... We're not oh, we got to do that system. <laughs> well, I'll just go ahead and tell you, neither of you picked what they talked about. Okay, what did, thank okay, God. What did they talk about? Link right? mentioned the pyramids, but only oh, in okay. brief. Uh, but the majority of the episode was spent talking about the Big Bang and finding out how the universe was created. That is a red link answer. Yeah, and I was just like, I don't... I just listened weeks, you know, months ago to their four-part l- Becoming Atheist discussion. and You're I'm really atheist? Agnostic, but you know what I mean. And, yeah, to their agnostic conversion, you know... And I'm like, I really don't want to have another whole podcast because they're like, well, maybe we will see God. And, and then that would, you know, and it just like all it turns into a whole conversation about God and the Big Bang and science. And the, and it was just boring. Oh, so they completely got off track. Exactly. The history, about the right. History. right. Well, I guess I did, too. Talking about the future. But still. Well, no, but it was, <laughs> no, it was more, it was more time. To yeah, exactly. Discussion. It was gotcha. part of your reasoning why you chose it. Yeah. You know, I chose I, when I was sitting here, I'm like, what would be the most like fun point of history to go to and for some reason the first thing that popped into my head I'm excited for this. was the boston tea party i just think it would be fun as hell to be able to because I, I, I guess that's I a revolutionary I moment right i wouldn't want to like necessarily like of course i want to participate but i'm not gonna like change the course of history or anything but like i'm just imagining just going like back in time thing. and being like yeah <laughs> fucking throwing thing, whole fucking things of tea in there with my friends <laughs> and we're you know we're angry because that dang old king is suppressing us right that it just it kind king. of also relates a lot to like kind of how i guess i feel now because i feel like i'm like oh my god like i want you know politics to be better and the president to be gone and it's like you know I, it's just kind of like i would rather go into the harbor with my friends and throw tea right. and start a whole new country i want to be the <laughs> i want to be the dog in the harbor that's like what is this new beverage oh. yeah, right it's like exactly. drinking the water like, oh it's like in its daily drink and then it's like 
tea? All this tea. This is so was, good. Do you think it was black tea? I imagine like, it was what? probably all kinds of tea, right? Like, I mean, because like England, like the drink England Any had tea. the, uh, know. you know, England was mon- monopolizing the spice route through India and all of the, no, all England of that shit. Just like, so. just like, oh, have all of our tea. Right. It could have like, just been any no! tea. But hell, I don't know. I mean, I would have to go there to find out, I guess, and be like, you guys heard of Earl Grey? <laughs> you guys, Jasmine, anyone? Right. Anybody? Anyway, let's throw some time. chamomile. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, can we just like, like take this? Like, yeah, right. This is my favorite. <laughs> I'm just gonna. Cinnamon. I wonder if anybody actually did steal it. You're just gonna tea, go back and I mean, show them of, your favorite. Tea. I wish there was footage of it. So, like, I guess that I, it's great. Exactly. That we could go back and watch it. And I'd just come back and I'd report exactly what happened. I'd be like, I went back in time <laughs> and I witnessed the Boston Tea Party and I can confirm there were hundreds of different types of tea. <laughs> oh my God. Like the, Everybody was very happy. Of- that's like of all the answers you came back with like that, like <laughs> nobody cared about you're like, that. I feel like I figured it out. Well, like what happened to that? Well, everyone was murdered. Like, I'm I don't like, know. I, don't but- know. <laughs> I counted every different type of tea. <laughs> no Earl Grey though. <laughs> I guess it hadn't been invented yet. That'd be fucking hilarious. Now, the other one, the, the main reason I wanted to have the second part of this discussion, uh, which is like a more like entertainment sort of mo- more modern historical kind of moment, is because the first thing, I'll just go first. The first thing that popped into my mind when I thought, like, what moment in history do I want to go back and witness would be the recording session of Black Star. With David that's Bowie, a really oh, that's a really good answer. That's I would really love to go back in time and just witness it. Mm-hmm. The because the just the musicianship on the album itself is so improvisational. So I just imagine there were so many times that they're just like jamming out on you know before that you know bef- right. as they're like oh, making the songs like together. Right. I would just love to be there. <laughs> right. I would just love to experience all of that because I have be really nice. a lot of the times as I'm listening to the songs I have it like clear as day in my head David Bowie singing in the like recording studio I'm like I can see can picture I it. can like picture it just because of like how raw the vocals are I guess yeah, I'm really like well produced in that you sense. can hear him breathing you can like the paper shuffling that kind of shit I would just love to be there for that, Imagine I would like obviously the I would, in the room too, right. Like, and with especially knowing he's, he's about, about to die, everything he's just, writing about exactly. Now. Right, it would be. I always imagine the uh, the, the, the band. I know just, the band wow. would just be sitting there watching him record his uh, vocal tracks, and they're just like, uh, uh. right, and they're like crying, yeah, right. like crying. <laughs> like, oh my god, I just can't even. It just all of that too, and especially because like I really like. David Bowie's last tour was in like 2003. So, I mean, obviously, I wasn't a fan of David Bowie when I was eight. So, I, I mean, I, I, it's not like I ever could have seen him tour. I never had, I never would have had an opportunity to do that anyway, uh, unless he lived young. longer, I guess. But if I had the chance to go, like, if I was going to see David Bowie perform, the 100% that I would want him to play is Black Star. So, why wouldn't I go back and just watch him record it and create it with that right. incredible. You It'd know. be really cool to see all those little things too. Like I didn't, I didn't lock that second. Right. And right. How do you even like? How do you direct and edit something like that? You yeah, know what yeah, I mean? I just, just I can't so even wild. imagine what it would have been like to just hear all of that. Like I just imagine the the energy and the musicianship would just be incredible and i i sincerely like you know people like celine dion i don't know why but celine dion's like always been recorded in the studio and like they'll you know film and they'll release like little you know the making of courage you know little scenes i think they should just genuinely do that (laughs) because like i would love to like just like see and edited together footage of david bowie you know these sort of like great albums being made yeah it doesn't well, I mean, exist of course but some not, for david, some not for david bowie but i've seen it with other bands for sure well and you know that that documentary that came out uh david bowie the last five years like right when he died it wasn't, really it wasn't very bad. good but it had a lot of there was some footage of like the band you know talking about their stuff on you know, the next day and that kind of stuff. And they talked to, they kind of hinted to what was going on and like working with David in the studio, but I just want to fucking see it, period. Well, a lot of the times when you buy like um, concert DVDs and shit like that, they'll have shit like that on there. Yeah. So maybe, maybe one exists that we just don't know about. Right. 
It not could. For, not for Black Star. Yeah, certainly not for you Black Star. I wish. Like, I wish. Or You're right. Or it's not, yeah, probably like by the time he was a fucking big superstar, and it's it's probably like something like Earthling, like his like '90s album, oh, you know, certainly. something yeah. like that. But you'd like that. Of course, I'd watch anything. I still own a DVD, a region fucking three or four DVD of uh, David Bowie. I think it's, I don't even know what's on it, but it's for oh, his Black Tie White Noise album, which was when he like got married. And I want, I would love to see it, but I, I guess I'll have to get a region fucking three DVD player. What is that? Like a DVD player from like Iran? Yeah, I don't know. I have no idea where, I don't know what the region is. It's fucking reason. annoying. Um, but so because, and you know, and then it's like, okay, well, if that's what I want to talk about, that's a completely different discussion from history. You know what I mean? Like right. it's right. historical in the sense that like it happened, but it's not historical <laughs> well, because you talk it, yeah, about is historical exactly. Right. Standards. Exactly. So I guess that's why I kind of opened it to some either like more modern history or it's entertainment history based. Music world, yeah, so exactly. Still historical. Whoever would like to go next, well, I guess. I, I feel like <laughs> mine is also music related. Okay. And. It might be a cliche answer, but I would really want to go back and see fucking, like, be there for the three days or however many it was at Woodstock. Oh, yeah. Because that, to me, seems like the most magical time to be alive. Like, everybody's tripping on LSD, just sitting out fucking free love, running around naked, fucking hugging each other, hearing bar out music. It just, yeah, like, that's awesome, I dream yeah. about it all the time, just being like, dude, you want to go catch Jimi Hendrix? Like, I got two fucking buttons of peyote. Like, gnarly. You right. just, like, don't have any worries in the world. Everybody's sharing everything. You just, like. Including ST eyes. <laughs> well, yeah, but at the right. same time, every Everybody's fucking on the fucking ground. Like it just sounds fun. It does seem like um, it does seem like it would be a fun time to go back to, and especially because there were so Magic. many like there were so many great you know performances that you you know besides obviously I don't know like what exactly these people performed at Woodstock, but you know you look at like the lineup and it's like Janis Joplin and Jimi Hendrix and like all these like legendary right. people da-da-da-da. that you know. Just, oh my god! They I used to have the atmosphere. They used to have a poster in Frickers. Do you remember there was? I in, think so. There were multiple booths that you could sit in that just had like one poster. There was that Family Guy poster that yeah, had like randomly all the, the characters on it, and then there was, was a it? poster that was like a Woodstock poster. It just it obviously a mass produced. Yeah, Woodstock I think that's poster. probably where I saw the lineup. But yeah, it had a, it has a really it had a really great lineup, and uh, you know I think the only part that would be negative about uh woodstock is just like you know the fact that it you know the, the cultural time period that it came in yeah but that was like i feel like the time for everybody to let go because it's like as bad as everything you right. it was just there was this other group of people who were just like no we're not gonna do that you're right <laughs> we're, we're just gonna have fun and live our lives the way we want to do it and they did and honestly and, and and that's the other thing i think like in music history that's like probably the biggest I think like I think maybe ever, like what that and Live Aid. Live Aid probably has yeah. more people. Just well, I don't know. I think, but if you think of like the big, the most, you know, the what do you want to say the the most like historical concerts in oh, music yeah, history, sure. I would say hit Woodstock has more cultural you know, impact there were, like, than Live Aid. Been Woodstock since there was like Woodstock '99. And I only know that because just a bunch of bad bands were at it. Like, The Offspring were there. Oh. You could see their performance. Yeah, yeah I knew it's, they it's should really perform bad. at It's the... really bad. But Counting Crows was also there. Oh. Just a lot of just, I don't know. But I would want to see, obviously, the classic Woodstock. Yeah, I would, yeah. And For sure. Just, and just, you know, being on mind-expanding drugs, enjoying everything about it. That... Or just having a nightmare trip somewhere. Like, <laughs> right. I could be that guy. Oh, that sucks if you were that guy. It's like all that love right, going around like, you're just like, what's happening? I almost happening? died at Woodstock and all I got was this t-shirt. <laughs> right. <laughs> Although I did hear it was very muddy and Yeah, it'd be, fun, it'd be and... fun to sit around the mud. This is really nice it, to me. Tripping and m- running your feet and fingers through the mud. Yes. <laughs> yeah. This sounds really fun. It sounds chaotic, but I agree. Fun. Chaotic. I, I feel like I would be too i feel like there'd be too many people there for me well i mean with coronavirus standards well i'm not even talking about that i just i just think it'd be like such a big crowd that i'd be like oh my god this i 
I'm not comfortable. But the venue's so big that like if I could, yeah, if we, if I was like sitting over here and I could, you know, and I'm, I'm not tripping and putting my feet in mud next to, you know, somebody else. <laughs> I mean, like yeah, exactly. Like, like crazy. I just, you know, I guess I'm, I don't know. I just, I like being alone. Not alone, <laughs> but like, I, I like having, like, I want to experience Woodstock, but I don't want to like experience Woodstock. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. yeah. You like, you want the feeling, like the openness, the the openness to talk about anything and like right. just be like, yourself maybe you but then it's just like somewhere like above everybody just like floating in a bubble yeah right <laughs> like I'm just a spectator from the future do not <laughs> do not one be guy's afraid like, one guy's like tripping <laughs> and actually <laughs> seeing you just right. they were tripping right. so like it could work out and that's like, why and that they, way yeah you exactly you have like uh, 200 people throughout the crowd who actually look up at you because you're they're on like that wavelength <laughs> right. to see you and you're like <laughs> do not say anything do not tell anybody I am here Can spectating this. Can you imagine this. being those people, too? And they'd be like, bro. Like, bro I never right. believe what I stock, saw. I saw a spectator from the future. <laughs> yeah, it really was. And then, I, yeah, that would be but wild. Would and then they'd hear they'd this podcast, and they'd be like, they're like 70 now, and they're like, you really did it? <laughs> <laughs> I'm, r- I'm not what crazy. Do think, what do you think would happen? So you're not supposed to like mess with history, but what if you went there, and then everyone was just like, oh, it's fake, but then that 70-year-old like remembered it, and he's like, that was real. That like, really happened. What do you think that would do? Like, you think that would alter anything in history? Yeah, well, it only depends on, like, if, you know... Maybe he, I think he was meant to learn that, though. Yeah, I guess... Mm, he, yeah, because it happened so far in the future. Right, but if he, you know, if all of a sudden he, uh, you know, he's, like, the president of a Fortune 500 company that s- supplies <laughs> ventilators to <laughs> hospitals, and then all of a sudden he's like, oh, my God, I... I, all these years I thought I was crazy and, and my therapist told I, me I was crazy but I was right and then he just kills himself and that you know you, Wait, of course there are repercussions why would he just kill himself I don't know I don't know, I don't know. I don't know. Be a time travel's leader. real <laughs> Company I don't know. But I, also be like, my therapist told me I was yeah. crazy my whole life. <laughs> totally. And also had been to Woodstock. Like, right. had been to I guess they would, I guess. I can't be part of the system, man, but I shouldn't have. I betrayed my root. You want to go now? I want to, let's have a new one. A new what? Woodstock, another one. Huh? What's have mine? a new Woodstock. Yes, I agree. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Woodstock 2021. But like in like 30 years or something when we're like COVID's gone. Right. That seems to be how long it's going to be around, it seems like. I think that's very possible at this yeah. point. Oh, no! the microphone has Latricia. Fallen. Latricia. Okay. Well, I, okay, you guys are, I just feel like you guys are going to judge me when I say this. You're going to be like, God most basic answer I've ever heard in my whole life. Like, cannot believe she's literally about to say this right now. Well, we'll at least say it when you're gone. But, okay, that's fine. But, um, honest to God, I want to go back and I want to hear that I have a dream speech. Okay. It's beautiful. Like, I know it's a huge, like, it's like a huge stereotypical thing. It's like history. It's like, that's what I want to go to. Everyone's like, that's what I want to go to. But honestly, that's what I want to go to. It like, would be a nice so speech to hear. Beautiful. Martin Luther King beat his wife. Seriously, RJ? <laughs> Still, okay. <laughs> it's certainly an, ins- it's it's an inspiration. Oh it's an inspiration. It's a ledge. Do you think the young, what do you think uh, would have happened had the young man not been assassinated? Do you think he would have run for office? No. He was too amp- he was too against it. I don't I don't know much about him. Like I don't really know the history that well. All I know is that Well, you got to go back and experience it. I didn't know the history it. well and then in high school I got assigned in English class to study a speech and I chose that one at the last minute because I was like big important speech. Uh, I have a dream. Right. That's all I knew. <laughs> right. And then I studied yeah, you know, it. Like, this is actually a good speech. <laughs> yeah, and then I studied <laughs> it and I was moved to tears. I read oh, the entire wow. thing like normally I would be like, "Oh, I have to read something. Let me skim it." write a paper a okay but no like i fucking read this thing i read it all the way through i found every single literary device used in it like wow i can't excuse any of his behavior but that was a literary mass shut up i just gotta say but that was a literary but that was a literary (laughs) masterpiece i'm sorry but it was a literary masterpiece like studying that specifically for english like that thing moved me to tears and it had so many like literary literary devices in it now i don't even know if the man wrote the speech himself because i i'm just I really not up I to date on it. i, I want to say know. he did i don't know history but i assume he did but that is like damn good you know i wouldn't damn be su- well written speech. i like i wouldn't be surprised now, to like find out that some woman wrote it and wrote then it. maybe his wife the, wrote right. it and then didn't get the credit but I want to just say, is I that think why he beat her. 
<laughs> I think you're right. Who then. knows? I do think maybe he wrote that was a speech. freak thing. Maybe he did it all the time. Who wife. cares? Or not? Who cares? Not who cares? You it's know, alleged. everybody gets canceled, oh God, and especially when you're like a radical. I mean, Everyone's certainly he's yeah, not he's radical. He's canceled. I just want to say I don't think Martin Luther King Jr. was radical, but by all means, what he believed in and stood for at the time that he did was radical, and obviously you know got him killed <laughs> but i think regardless of all of that there's no doubt that that speech and the things that he did were very important i bet the people who were there were like just knowing they're like we're witnessing history kind of like how we did like with obama like this is fucking history this man speaking right now right i would love to be in that like parade that happened afterwards i assume we're like yes right liberate where did he give the i have a dream speech was it in dc Mm-hmm. At the at the reflecting at the, pool, at the 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 monument. Yeah, yeah, I thought so. We need to see. Yeah, there was like a hundred thousand in the crowd or something like something momentous for like the time. Like there's, I saw like a picture because I was like looking up all kinds of shit about it after I read it. There's like a picture I saw of, of like of the people like behind him, and you can just like as far as I could see, it's like That's crazy. people packed in there. Like, and it's like you see that now today when people go and they like have big like movements like the, the Me Too movement March, yeah. like happened there. But, like, for back in, like... In the 60s. I mean, yeah. that's pretty... Yeah, and especially... It's a large crowd. Especially for, like, a racial really equality me, yeah, thing, for, and too, yeah, right? For, yeah, exactly, exactly. It really makes me want to go to D.C. and just try to, like, get that energy, like, feel it. Like, right. all that shit that happened there, you know? Yeah, because it's, like, black people weren't accepted, and it's, like, to have hundreds of thousands of them, like, in the capital of the United States and, like, have, like... Someone speaking out for them, like that's big. I can, oh, yeah, I, can, right. like, that's I got huge. white people were really scared. Oh, I'm sure they were. It's, I mean, ridiculously, they were, but like, I'm sure they were scared. I'm sure they were angry and like, fuck them, honestly. Right. right. I'd think, be especially afraid of the Black Panthers, wh- who I think Martin Luther King spoke out against, but just like a well, everyone, militia of black people who wanted to get back at white people. It's like, interesting. Uh, it's interesting because I think about, I think all the time about like, not to say I think all the time about revolution, but I kind of do. And it's like, That's which one? Do. And it's like, which one? Like, I'm myself, like, a pacifist. And so, like, obviously I'm, like, attracted to, like, Martin Luther King Jr. and, like, Gandhi and, like, other pacifists. I don't know history very well. But, um, <laughs> but, but, like, I know that, like, sometimes, like, you have to fight fire with fire. And it's just, like, how do you justify any type of war and any type of violence? Like, when you're trying to say that all people are people no matter what, and then to like also be like, but sometimes you have to get violent to get things done. It's like, ugh, it doesn't right. sit well. So it's, it's like, how do on. you, it's just how do you make change peacefully and get people to believe it? Because nobody believes in peace. Right. No, you don't, no one believes in peace. Like, I very rarely come across anyone who thinks that a peaceful society could ever happen. I ask a lot of people and everyone says no. And so it's like... Well, it's like I think everybody how? would want it. Yeah, and you can't, like, you can't, it. It's just you hard can't, to imagine you can't that argue. would all get along. Exactly, you can't argue against peace, but it's like, nobody thinks it's possible. And, <laughs> Which and is then sad. Just, and then just all it's the really peaceful sad. protesters in the past, like they made a big impact, but also war made a big, big impact, violence made a big impact, and so it's like... But it's like in know. the opposite direction. It made an impact, like it just fueled the more world's, hatred. Like hatred, right? Because it's like, mm-hmm. well, we we went and like did all of our shit in Iraq and Afghanistan, and then now they hate us, and now they're like, okay, well, we're gonna ISIS, y'all. I don't think right? you can ever have violence in the name of peace, but I think if you're gonna have violence, you should call it violence, and you should. All you should you can like never. You I don't think. I don't. No, no, no. Let me think. <laughs> I don't think you could like ever justify violence to yourself, but I think that you would have to like you would ha- I think everyone would have to agree on it. But like how do you start out? Like I don't even know. How would you how? Well, how? and it's hard because like sometimes you have things like that like the Geneva Convention where everybody sits down and they're like this is what this is what's like okay to this is like this is okay violence and this is not okay violence and and, and then you have people like, and it's, but it's like once violating you commit, that in police riots. It's like once you commit a violent act towards someone, you can't just say sorry and then expect them to get over it. Like it has to be like a two-way discussion. Like right. you have to really talk about it and like feel each other and like 
understand each other, to be able to move past an act of violence. And, like, the world has had so much violence inflicted upon it. It's like, will people ever be able to have that discussion? And will they ever be able to, like, move past it? And I think only then when we can move past, like, when we can forgive each other for anything, really, when we can forgive each other, like, and I'm not excusing any kind of behavior, but I think only at that point where you can truly understand anyone will be, like, when we're, like, there. I think I agree and with you. And then what you, comes next? I don't know. But That's I think, just what I feel. I think realistically the only way that but I don't could know how happen it's realis- I have no idea how it's realistically possible. Armageddon and it's, like, the 300 people that survive. I have and no then idea. they start a new society, and they're no like, we have to be completely possible. different from that. How? Like, <laughs> like, I can't even, you can't, it's, you can't even comprehend how to make it possible. It, it, but wouldn't it be nice? It's like, okay, well, because if you, it's like, the only way to do it is to completely dismantle everything that we already know. Okay. You know what I mean? It's like, because in your head, you're like, okay, well, I have to, do, well, well, we'd have to elect a new president. You can't, And we'd I have know, to elect have a new to dis- Senate. You'd have and to it's to like, that's not going to fucking do anything. the entire world. Because we're, exactly. But, or you could just change it into something new. It's like, you don't have to dismantle and build back up. You can use what you already have and, like, change it into something new. But it's just like, what? And who decides and how? And it's like, in making all those decisions, the same thing just happens where people are just like, well, all it takes is for one person to be like, well, I'm just going to do this for me and then screw you. And then they never talk it out. And then there's one conflict and then it just starts over again. So is this the earth just like a continuous like ebb and flow of like peaceful times and horrible times? Like what? I, I don't know. I don't know. I think it's just destiny at that point, I guess. Who knows? Well... I think it was. I'm sorry, I didn't mean to stress you earlier. I was just really, <laughs> I was just really, really in the moment. I was like, I need to remember this thought. I see Sin over there. I love you. <laughs> <laughs> Me too. Okay. I'm glad there was a resolution. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> uh, I'm gonna say something. No, no, no. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I was really, really in the moment. <laughs> I really was like, I, was I have like, to get shush. this out. No, I know. Right. (laughs) Hey, I'm a guest. You have to let me. You're right. Well, thank you, of course, for joining (laughs) us. (laughs) Maybe on like, probably on like. I guess on Mote. Yeah, on Mote. Yep. The new president is sent. The guests can Uh, shush the host. Right. Guess. Guess. Yeah. Whatever. Well, Well, you were interrupting my thought. That's the only reason I did it. I had to get it out. I um, we're we're gonna continue you, making this podcast. We're gonna continue making it via distance, like we've discussed. But uh, nothing will ever beat making this podcast in person with my best friends, best friend, and you know, best, new special guest best friend. <laughs> um, so yeah, I just uh, yeah. I'm looking forward to it. But uh, yeah, this show has always been important to me, so I'm looking forward to continuing it. Me too. Me too. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Hope I can be another guest. Of course, of course. It's a it's a great history to have the same guest over and over again. Honestly. Sweet. <laughs> yeah. I'm excited for this. Tune in next week on Stay Moat. Yeah, and that's the last time I'm making macaroni and cheese.